stuff that I would start out with are element and basics tabs. Okay. Elements are kind of like a building blocks. So you're probably going to use a lot of circles, lines, and arcs. Mm -hmm. So obviously just drawing these lines out. And you saw how I can make this box skinnier or fatter. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is that scanning area that it's looking for the dark to bright changes. Okay. So maybe for down here, notice how if I put it like that, it's probably going to pick up up there. Maybe not. But I would keep that in mind. Okay. Looks like there's a chamfer here. So like for your apps tab, your chamfer tool. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, you'd do the same for that fillet to it, right? And then uh, could you use this existing line? So that's only under program, like not Correct. under single single measurement Correct. or Correct. so that was really not good to use, huh? I would not use those, no. And that's what I use all the time. The that might explain why and um automatic measurement. So right. we gotta okay. Yeah. What the stuff you're you'll checking. You get on. the right information doing this way and ultimately it's gonna save you time because You'd be able to put more parts on there. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, but... um, I didn't. So, sorry to interrupt. I did want to mention um, we want to have the ability to check threads. Yeah. And you said there's a there's a thread tool. Thread tool. Right there. So mm. let's go over that if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. So with our thread tool, I actually have a thread here. You do? Okay. I was going to give Unless you, you a guys bolt. have one. Okay, thread gauge. So can we calibrate thread gauges on this thing? Um, on this machine, depending on the type of thread, yes. Okay. When you get into the smaller thread types, I would say no. So when you, you say thread... 256, we're not going to get it. Probably. Okay. <laughs> okay. But like, just to give you the idea that, you know, concept. Normally you'd want this. I'd probably sit this on here, actually. Just make sure I'm definitely going to look for one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Did you look at that uh, uh, master grain? Mm -hmm. All right, so once again, do you remember how to autofocus? Do you remember that off the top of your head? Yeah, you say... Um, What's the first thing we do? Yeah, click on that, then make the box smaller. Then move the box where you want it? Yep. Sorry, I'm telling you here. You can <laughs> answer questions. Then from there, do you remember what we do after? Um, to get to that pink autofocus button? Did you click back on that? Yeah. This will take it away. This one is where okay. the pink button is. Okay. One right next to it. Yep. So the machine will go in an autofocus for you. Then we just X that out and click that to make them go away. Okay. With your thread tool, it's gonna want you to basically just draw a box around the teeth that you guys wanna measure. So we would go like that. Um, for the thread tool to work, you need a minimum of three full threads, no half threads or end threads. Okay. okay. Then we'll check all the different boxes of what you want to check on it. What do you normally check? Just major, minor? And major, pitch. minor, yeah, the pitch. Okay. Pitch diameter, you can. Um, there is a tolerance table here. So if you check this box, it'll bring up all the preloaded thread types. Okay. There's a lot. Nice, nice. You got, no, I don't want to say it. You got M44 by 1.5 left hand. <laughs> <laughs> it might be in here if you guys yeah. want to go digging for it. If it yeah. is, it'll just give you a go, no go on major minor. Okay. But once you have it all checked on what you want to check, just click apply. So that's what they use. Yeah. Yep. You see the... So this gives you the pitch, um, major minor. And then from here, you guys can put in... Uh, now, does that do the different grades of threads? Um, High precision or whatever the, they, the differences 2B, are. 2B, 3B, you right. class, yeah. The class of threads, yeah. That I can find out for you. I don't right. know that off okay. the top of my head. Right. But that's how you would use the thread tool. I guess depending on the measurement would tell us if what grade it is. Yeah. yeah. But um, this is another thing too, like you can see I have a little bit of right. smudge there. Yeah. 
clean it. I mean, you could use the putty to clean the thread off. I keep that gel thing on it to protect the threads. Yeah, yeah. Um, but CM yeah. View. Yep. But that's the app. Uh, the apps tab is going to have that radius tool, okay. the chamfer tool, and the thread tool. That's in the app. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, basics are going to be basic measurements. Okay. Elements are the building blocks. Okay. So your lines, your circles, arcs. Gotcha. Um, if you wanted to draw like a peak line on these threads, if you want to manually go in, you know, we can choose like the max point. And then from here, we'll probably choose like a min point. Because it's going to throw them. And then from there, you could do like a line to line to get that major. But I would use the thread tool. Yeah. All right, so uh, the other thing with this machine, you're gonna find out there's like eight different ways to do a lot of different things. So finding the most efficient way to do it, the least subjective way to do it um, is the best way. So for example, like your arc measurement, you use the corner arc every time you wanna measure a radius. Okay. It's just less subjective. The machine does more of the work for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the chamfer, you could easily yeah, go because we in. have trouble with the just getting the radius yeah, to snap. Yeah, but we always on single measurements. All the right. Right. Yeah, I will. I honestly don't <laughs> use them that much because okay. I do know that they're not as good gotcha. as going through the program mode and creating the programs. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we stress it more towards that. Mm -hmm. um, but same like for the chamfer, for example, I could easily put a line there, line there, and a line on the chamfer. I could do intersection points for all three of those lines and then do a point to point measurement, which is the same thing as just drawing two lines with the chamfer tool. Right. So there's just a bunch of different examples of ways yeah. uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, virtual tools, these are kind of, remember, like I said, these are kind of things you can put on there that aren't actually there in real life. Okay. So an intersection point or a midpoint, um, mid center lines, parallel lines, any, any sort of tangency that you get into. Um, connecting lines, so for example, if I wanted to make, you know, make a line there, and throw those lines in, from here I can connect them to make them one big line. Okay. This will be more repeatable gotcha. in terms of measurements. Um, you know, if I wanted to do intersection points, it's very simple. Intersect that line and that line, boom, you have an intersection point. Okay. And then if I wanted to do another one, here I can show you. Like, uh, It's a matter of just playing with it. I'm not going to lie to you. The more you play with this, the better off you'll get with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would try to dedicate a half hour to an hour every day if you could. Okay. What about how do you change it from inches to millimeters like you did over there? Good question. Uh, menu. Setting, display settings, millimeters or inches. Okay. It's defaulted to inches right yeah, now. That's, that's you, can you can change the number of decimals here as well. Okay. So if you're getting a bad measurement, but it's only three decimals on the print, but it's five on here, if you change it to that, you know, it would, it could change it from being good to bad or bad okay. to good. Why don't you change your degree to uh, three or four places right now, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do, you know, midpoint. Boom. And then with GD and T, these are the kind of things that you guys have right now. Yep. Yeah. So um, the coordinate settings box is one that I would use if you want to put a formal X, Y plane in there. So if I wanted to maybe, you know. Center line. Yeah, if I wanted mm -hmm. to actually do bisector between these two. I can do coordinate settings, line in a point, X mm -hmm. and Y. And now you have an X, Y plane to go off of. Okay. Mm -hmm. This helps with repeatability as well. Yeah. Okay. So then with GD and T, you just pick whichever thing you want. And then from there, you can do like parallelism. Okay. So with this, it says specify a reference line. That'll always be your datum. Okay. On here, on the screen too, it'll show you the little triangle yeah. to gotcha. signify that it's the yeah. datum as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And 
and that's so you got perpendicularity you got profile wow. yep profile wow. helps with those dxf files right. it's just super easy yeah. and then uh concentricity true position yep yeah and then like when we're done what were the two things you got to do once you're done programming everything you remember these two things oh yeah register save or register pattern first register pattern yeah. first and then save, save. name it Yep. If you use a fixture, don't include the fixture. Mm -hmm. And then you save it. Okay. I forgot the register. You gotta click this register button over here. Okay. And then you can save. And what did you name it? Just I I'm not gonna save it for okay. you. Just I don't wanna bog it down. Right. You don't have to bog it. But uh don't worry about putting too many programs on it. I think there's a few terabytes worth of storage. I've never, I've never had anybody fill up their computer tower before. Yeah. Okay. Mine, mine alone, I think I have like four or five hundred programs on it. And Every for, time I do a demo, it's a new program. I'm just too lazy to delete all of them. For ours, they're typically custom jobs. Mm -hmm. We do have some repeat customers. If we the know stuff, them, we can yeah. save them as repeat. Yeah. So we know that yeah. we won't need to program it again, unless there's a uh, change. I believe we can export the XFs on this as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would turn this off today and then turn it on again tomorrow. Okay. Because that keeps happening. I don't like how it's. I don't like how it's. Because it's already been turned off. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we should turn it off after this. Okay. Uh, well, it's not connected to that, so it's not going to update itself. Well, no, but I mean, sometimes the components yeah. RAM and all right. that tends to bog down. Yeah. It's starting to warp. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you guys can do actually a little bit of reverse engineering on this, too. So if I take, like, my contour tool, and I just kind of draw out whatever I want and apply it, mm -hmm. I can now save this and export it as a DXF if I wanted to. Okay. So, yeah, very good. Um, this does it with data points That's as opposed to having the full lines. Just as a heads up. So. When when uh, you need to measure something from inventory, so Ravi can make a print. Yeah. We can say click. All right, Ravi, we worked our ass off getting this for you. Yeah. Look, maybe we should try. You can also thing. save screen images too. So if you want to send stuff to yeah. customers, you can do that too. But this is still a grayscale image, mm -hmm. just to give you a heads up. But yeah. Same we get on the other one, grayscale. That's grayscale as well. Yeah. 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 It's just higher resolution. This is a six megapixel camera. That's a twenty-one megapixel camera. Okay. So it's a world of difference. Yeah. Um, that's why every time I use this, it's a little on the blurry side. <laughs> like I always think, like, do I need glasses? And then I go back to that one. It's crystal clear, and then it works pretty well. So.